beginner Popsy Lock automatic door opener was able to fit on a 5x7cm board which seemed nearly impossible at first with all the components that had to be put together. It took several burnt fingers, burnt wires, and broken boards before it was all figured out. So today I'm going to talk to you about the design process when laying out components on a circuit board. Before this project was actually assembled on a printed circuit board, the whole kit was tested with large breadboards to make sure the design would actually work. I would recommend doing this before anyone builds their kit because once you solder a component to a PCB, it's pretty hard to get it off. After putting my circuit together and I had the servo moving the way I wanted to, I could then move it to a PCB. Seems pretty easy, right? Well, this original project was actually assembled on a much bigger board. The problem was it was too spacious and required a heck of a lot more wires than were actually needed. So the design went smaller and I tried out a 5 by 7 centimeter board. The first few times I placed the components on the board I had the op amp on one side of the board and the AT Mega 8 chip on the other which hardly left any room for the LEDs or servo motor and what a big mess with the wiring. I had to think smarter and was actually able to minimize wires when I could put the components semi close to one of the ground rails and use resistor pins to connect directly to the chip pins in certain steps. So there are a few things to remember when designing the layout. 1. Space does matter. Sure you can put your components on a bigger board but crossing over wires is not a good thing to have. For example if the insulation were to rub off and you got the internal metal touching each other you could ruin your whole circuit. Usually engineers of the trade will design their circuit with a free software such as Eagle and LT Spice. All relatively easy software to use which even you the user can try out. Two. I've probably mentioned this several times in my projects, but ground and power rails can make the world of difference when it comes to having a clean design. If you can't make a ground or power rail, then a line of solder also does the trick. 3. Even when you're ready to move your breadboard design to a PCB, before you begin soldering you can place all your components on the board and hold it down with tape. I mean all the components. You never know if you're going to run out of space, and since you don't have anything soldered yet, it won't be such a big deal to move the components around once more. 4. The great thing about the kit being a do-it-yourself project is even the design I created may not be the absolute best one to have. So it's up to you, the consumer, to beat my design and make one that is more elegant and easier to solder. If you're feeling ambitious, I'll actually put out the links for you to try out LT Spice or Eagle. These are great tools that design engineers use to make chips that may have taken years to plan out. Eagle provides files that can actually be sent to a company to have your printed circuit board customized to your needs and all you'll need to do is solder the components. The rest is already internally connected. Of course the software is not totally necessary and usually breadboarding things out first helps since you get an actual visualization of what your design is doing. Just remember to always be mindful of spacing and always try to improve on your first design. If you missed any of my other Kip K tips, click the end cards on the screen to check those videos out. More Kip K tips next week. Thanks for watching.